I guess Monique and her husband had a couple of things to say about him on Instagram. So we gonna play that video too. I know this is a long video, guys, but let's get to it. Almost, our brother, D.L. Hugo. Mm. And we are firm believers on what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. Yes. So we gotta start off by saying there was an inaccuracy as it regards Monique saying that there was a, cis, a cease and desist that was given to DL to shut it down. Mm -hmm. What had taken place to be accurate was after Monique spoke to Brother DL on that conversation, Brother DL said, what? Well, after we spoke on that conversation, when we hung up that phone, the last thing he said was, it is what it is. And I said, D.L., then we're going to have to get our attorney involved. That's the last thing me and D.L. Hughley said on that conversation. And after having that conversation with Monique, we went almost. Our brother, our attorney involved, Attorney Anderson. At the time, there were some emails that were transferred back and forth between his side and our side, and it escalated to a point when we had our attorney on the email, whereby then finally DL said that he would scratch the interview. Yes. So it was inaccurate that a cease and desist had to be given. However, that was the next step, and that's what Monique remembered because when I discussed it with her, we said that would be the next step. But to DL's credit, at that moment, when it had escalated, that's when he decided to shut it down. However, that is a bit different from how it seemed to have been communicated, whereby on the phone, they were having a conversation and it was kumbaya, though he never used those words kumbaya, mm -hmm. it did not attorney end with her being under the impression that this was going to be resolved and shut down. So we wanted to make that clear out of love and respect for Brother DL. And despite all the commentary that he gave, <laughs> with, he all gave the, with all the crunches she be doing, the I, captain's in the front. I do. And I do. Tell me. I'm a sneak snacker, baby. And she doesn't sneak <laughs> when she snacks. Okay. Hey. But nonetheless, we wanted to be clear because at the end of the day, we black folks in this world of entertainment. And there was a level of harshness in his return that seemed a little bit exaggerated for the moment. And we wanted to make it clear. And I think end with only can do it best when she speaks in reference to what she meant while talking about DL in the past. You know, when I watched DL say she went after my wife, she went after my daughters, I want to really be clear who I went after so that there's no confusion here. When I was on stage, when I'm on stage and we are performers, we are performing to the audience in front of us. When I was on that stage and I said, it must be hard to perform oral sex. But differently. Okay. On a coward. <laughs> that had nothing to do with Mrs. Hughley. That insult was directed straight to you, DL. That had nothing to do with your wife. That was straight to you. So it felt like you were trying to pass it off as if I was going after your wife. When it comes to your daughter, Monique can do it best when you did a post about, you did an interview about. I didn't do that interview. I simply reposted what you said. So when you say, Monique, you went after my daughter, that's untrue, DL. I posted what you said. And then when you said on, on your when you were really going for it with your shades on, and you said, Monique said, I stood by and watched my daughter be raped. D.L. Hughley, that's your conscience talking to you, brother. I never said that. I never said that. 
And I want to be a little clear about something else. Never would I try to do anything to harm any of your babies because we got babies too. So never would I try to do anything to harm your children. However, what I was saying to your daughter and to the other you did a post about, you did an interview about, I didn't do that interview. The other daughters out there, I know what it's like for your daddy to know you've been touched and he not protect you because my daddy did the same thing. That's, that's what that whole point was. But I was showing why I would call you a coward, brother. I don't think it's brave that you didn't protect your baby. So when I said what I was saying, let me be clear to you, D.L. Hughley, it had nothing to do in reference to your family. And you know that. Now, when you were speaking and you were going off and you said, um, uh, what did he say? She was so offended by the game we play, but you didn't say what the offense was. And that's the part for me that is disheartening that you continue to try to trick and smoke and mirror our people. If you're going to say it, say it all the way through. When you say family is sacred, you are absolutely right, baby. You're right. But when you say would my husband rather and you co-sign your team of people doing that, well, isn't my husband sacred? So you got to be careful in your words because the very words you use, DL, they're going to come back and they're coming back to bite you, baby. And what I also said on Club Shay Shay, when I looked in that camera, I said, DL, I love you, brother. And I don't know if you didn't hear that part, but we really do. We love you, brother. And if ever you get, but when you say what my. Well, Club Shay Shay. Hey, man. So you already know, man. They already have tried to react to it, but uh, he did say something on his radio show. So we going to go to that, too. Uh, let's see right here. I know we are about 25 minutes into the video. All right. I, I, I'm taking time to respond to Monique again. She made another greasy ass video with her daddy. Um, we kind of relitigating some of the stuff she said on Club Shay Shay, where she talked about how she was on the show and somebody, you know, they played a game. Would you rather? And I guess she felt like they insulted her husband's sexuality, which is interesting because she can always talk shit about everybody else's sexuality. But I guess her husband's sacrosanct. He's off limit. But a hit dog will bark unless his mouth is full. But she talked about, well, she didn't actually call her lawyer. Who the fuck would be afraid of your lawyer? Your lawyer, you mean the lawyer that did your contract? The law, that lawyer, the lawyer from the firm of Negro, 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 from Ghetto, Got Him and Gone, that lawyer? Who the fuck afraid of him? He couldn't get your name right on a ticket. He gonna get it right on a, on a legal document. It didn't happen because we decided it shouldn't happen. We didn't, you didn't need to, because we respect people. We don't have to do things for, t for, for clicks. They took it off because you asked me to. Because I respected you at the time. You also talked about how I um, disrespect you on so many platforms. Uh, but you have yet, you have this impeccable memory where you can tell to the degree well, who did what to you and why and what happened, where you were. But you can't pull up one time on any platform that I said anything about you at all because you know you're lying. You got that piece of paper and that big ass memory, but you can't pull one up. My biggest mistake is saying yes to you. I should have said no when you came on my, you couldn't come on my radio show. I should have said no that I wasn't playing those dates with you. As a matter of fact, I, almost anybody who says yes to you at some point is, is, is in this milieu with you. Almost anybody. So I would suggest anybody out there, you could say yes to drugs, but say no to Monique. You talked about how um, you, my children, families are off limits. They weren't when you were running across Vegas. I mean, on the stage in Detroit, they weren't when you talking shit on social media. When you got your ass whipped and your tickets dropped, then they became off limits. But let's do this. Let's decide that you will treat my children like you treat yours, like you don't know them, invisible, like you have no relationship with them, like you're estranged, you're, like you're unfamiliar, like you don't know them. You also intimated that I was coward. You know what I'd never do? I would never let my woman take care of me. I would never let my woman get evicted from her apartment. I would never let my woman has to ask another man for money. I'd never do that. You Can your old that. man say the same? He loves you. Of course, he got to say that. You claim him on your taxes. He's a dependent. He's sitting there with you right now. Uh-huh and everything. Because it ain't like he does anything else.
But you never address the salient point. I said that if you spent as much time writing your Netflix special as you did arguing about getting it, it wouldn't have been trash. It was. I didn't say it. I defy anybody out there. Stop listening to me. Watch it. Read the reviews. Read the reviews. You beg for something. You made valid points that women are underpaid, that they're not valued. That's absolutely right. So you would think that when you got a chance to do something that you would argue for, you'd be up for the challenge, but you shit the bed because you never are ready for it because all you ever do is complain about what you don't have. You're never ready for the moment because you're always living in the past. I said it. You, if you spend half of your time doing as opposed to talking about who didn't do for you and what they did for you, you'd be a lot further along. You wouldn't be evicted. You wouldn't be working for your man. You wouldn't be asking other comics for money. Thank you. So you got all the ingredients. Take that piece of paper that you're running down the list with and that pen that you got and that daddy six next to you, the daddy sitting next to you and do what you can't do, do what you never do. Write a fucking joke. Hey, uh, this nigga with all right. Oh, this nigga with all on his show. He was not playing, but man, y'all already know. Uh, he said he doesn't owe her 